rioters chanting, hang Mike Pence, Mike Pence, the vice president of the United States. It was one of the more disturbing images of the attack on our Capitol back on January 6th. The rioters came dangerously close to the vice president that day, only missing him by about a minute. Now we know, thanks to reporting from the New York Times, that the January 6th investigation has heard testimony that President Trump himself, well, he liked those chants. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows reportedly told colleagues that during the riot, President Trump, quote, said something to the effect of, maybe Mr. Pence should have been hanged. Meadows, of course, denied that reporting. We also got this reporting from Politico that in the weeks after the election, after meeting with one of the key House Republicans trying to overturn the election, White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows reportedly burned papers in his office. Republican Congressman Jim Jordan, Scott Perry, and Andy Biggs, and the Republican leader in the House, Kevin McCarthy, are all now defying subpoenas from the January 6th investigation. That has set up a showdown just days before the House investigation is set to begin holding public hearings. Meanwhile, the Justice Department is stepping up its investigation into the events of that very day. The New York Times reporting a federal grand jury has started issuing subpoenas linked to the plan to overturn the 2020 election by sending slates of pro-Trump electors in states that Biden won. And then there's the investigation out of Fulton County, Georgia, the investigation that started because the infamous January 2021 phone call where President Trump repeatedly urged Georgia's Secretary of State to, quote, find 11,000 votes for him. That investigation is expected to subpoena up to 50 individuals this week as the grand jury begins its work. So many updates, so much to unpack. So let's discuss and bring in Barbara McQuaid, former U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan and a professor at the University of Michigan School of Law. Barb, there's a lot to go through, but I want to start with this reporting that Trump liked these chants to hang Mike Pence. So let's just break this down. It is, it is new news that Trump liked those chants, but it's not at all a surprise. Are you surprised that Trump would think that? I guess it's surprising that Mike Pence wouldn't testify in Trump's impeachment hearing, given that fact. But given all of this, do you believe it's going to make a difference? Well, I think it could matter. You know, these hearings occur in June. We've heard Jamie Raskin, Congressman Raskin, say, we're going to hear new details that are going to blow the roof off of Congress. You know, it sort of violates every lawyer's uh, strategy of uh, promise low and deliver high. But it, it suggests to me that there are some new details that he expects to emerge that are going to be really blockbuster. And some of these little fragments we're getting seems to be uh, something that you could piece together for something larger. This idea that, that Donald Trump was was happy or pleased to hear that people were saying hang Mike Pence. I, I'd like to think that he did not want Mike Pence really to die, but that perhaps he thought the chaos was something that he could use to his advantage when his goal was to stop that certification. The more chaos that was occurring at the, at the Capitol, the more likely it was that they could stop that vote that day. So perhaps that is part of um, not the plan, but at least a happy coincidence that made Trump happy when he wanted this certification to stop. The, the Department of Justice is really focused on the rioters themselves and pursuing justice for, for them or for our country, really. But as it relates to the hearings, do you expect the committee to largely focus on former President Trump? I think it's inevitable that uh, we won't hear some things about former President Trump. You know, I think one of the things they've done is they divided up the work into a number of different subcategories to talk about how the Capitol was breached, uh, ignoring some of the intelligence that was happening there and other things. Because remember, their goal is to fill gaps in the law and to see where things are going. But I do think that one of their goals is to show the American people how egregious this assault on democracy was. And so what I'll be looking for is those conversations between Donald Trump and John Eastman and Rudolph Giuliani, some of those things at the higher levels of planning. Uh, was this a plan? Was this just a, uh, a bunch of uh, little efforts that all came together? Or was this part of one coordinated plan? Those are some of the things I'll be looking to hear. And I, I do expect them to focus on that aspect of things based on the witnesses they've called and some of the uh, reporting that we're hearing these days. What's your take on this reporting that former White House Chief of Staff met with Republican Congressman Scott Perry and supposedly went back to his office and burned papers? 
Is that not potentially a criminal act? One would think that that's White House records and he was destroying them. Uh, if that is true, so you always have to start with that premise, is it true? And so that's why you'd want to have somebody talk, talk about it under oath and really push it. But yes, I think it is potentially uh, absolutely criminal. And you also have to realize just how unusual that is. It's very, very strange that someone would set a fire in the White House. If you have sensitive documents that you want to destroy, that happens every day. You have shred bins because people do have lots of sensitive documents that they're possessing at the highest levels of government. And so there are normal ways to get rid of those. Why would someone resort to burning them only because there was something they were so desperate to make sure didn't fall into someone else's hands. So it's very suspicious for that reason. But did it uh, violate a law? Possibly, if it was the type of record that needs to be retained under the Presidential Records Act, number one, or it could even be obstruction of an official proceeding if it was in anticipation of a future investigation, even if that investigation had not yet begun. So I think there are a lot of reasons to look at that episode. And Barb, quickly, I'm out of time, but all of this subpoena defying, there's no consequences for that. In my own little personal life, I, I tend to think if someone <laughs> came to my door with a subpoena, I'm pretty sure I'd respond to it or, or fear going to jail. Yeah, don't follow the, the lead of some of these uh, so-called leaders. Um, I think consequences Why not? Will they don't come. seem to be in trouble. What? Uh, not yet, but I think that, you know, Steve Bannon was charged criminally, and we have seen that ultimately he is going to go to trial. I think there's a strong likelihood he will be convicted, but it's a slow process, and it's not the best process. If what you really want is their testimony, I think there are better ways to get it. And Mark Meadows, I don't think, has skated in, by any means whatsoever. I think one reason he hasn't been charged with defying the subpoena is because the Justice Department has bigger plans for him. Bigger plans. Well, I'll be here for that. Barb McQuaid, you always <laughs> make us smarter every time you're here. Former U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of Michigan and professor at the University of Michigan School of Law. Thank you, Barb. When we come